here's part seven. So the man was upset with the kid by him simply asking, I kind of want eggs and bacon this morning. That sounds really nice. I've worked really hard this week. And the man loses his mind and he's like, I will not feed you pig because I worked in a slaughterhouse for years and pigs are intelligent and they're wonderful and they're lovely. And I know we work on a pig farm, but pigs do not deserve the hate that they get. And I will not tolerate eating pigs in this household. Okay. And after all the years of working in a slaughterhouse, seeing them boiled alive, their throats cut, and they all died screaming. So now, kid, what else would you like for breakfast? So now we're back to Chuck and Leslie, and I take notes as I read these books, and to quote my notes, Chuck and Leslie have the nastiest food sex. So this particular scene has Leslie spread out on a table. Chuck is unwrapping a elongated roast beef sandwich, and he's putting this sandwich, that's not a euphemism for anything, it's an actual food, warm sandwich, up her hoo-ha, as Leslie is shoving her mouth full of french fries. Um, they're both naked, by the way. This... Th no. <laughs> no. No. And at this moment, as the roast beef sandwich makes contact with another roast beef Sammy, um, the doorbell rings, and it's that blonde girl here for her weed. Chuck... Let's her in the apartment as Leslie is trying to make herself presentable. She's not pleased that this child is now inside their apartment as their um their their foodie intimate toys are everywhere. Oh, long baby bing bing. Long baby. So Chuck hands over the weed to this child and she leaves the apartment after they start chatting about hey did you see that that guy who threw himself down the stairs the other day yeah i saw that that's so crazy wow uh anyway this is leslie uh leslie say hi hi okay and then the girl left and then the tone of the book switches and leslie starts talking about her past leslie is covered in self-harm scars she has a history of mental illness. She survived uh, scooter slide self-deletion. I don't want to get in trouble for saying actual terminology. So her ex-husband was chronically depressed, and he did not treat his depression very well. They both had two kids, beautiful, young, uh, I think they were under the age of six. Their marriage was suffering because the husband didn't know how to take care of himself. Leslie had her budding mental illness and erotic behavior. They tried to hold their family together, but with the husband, as, as he would start to get better, something snapped in his brain and he would just go right back to depressive, in bed all day, couldn't function, and it really tore them apart. Leslie tried to hold on. But she began a flirtatious and sexual relationship with one of her coworkers, and I guess one day they were caught doing it in a public bathroom. A mom and her child walked in on them, butt naked, in a public bathroom, and Leslie was arrested and slapped with a sexual offender charge for public indecency, and she spent a little time in jail for that. Well, that really ruined her husband by finding out that she cheated on him. And when Leslie got home, she found her husband and her two kids dead in the master bedroom. The husband uh, poisoned their whole family and Leslie lost it. She threw herself out of a second story window, glass and all, um, and just tried to end it right there. But she's still alive, and now she lives with the regret of believing that she offed her own family due to her negligence. Oop, covering kitty butt.
My apologies. No, Bing Bing, no. No. So after this little story time of heavy emotions, um, Chuck is like, all right, let's go get some drinks. Let's treat our problems with more alcohol because that solves all of our problems. So they went to the bar. Leslie came with. She was introduced to Eugene, who does not like Leslie for some reason because he has a weird thing with women who see other people, I guess. She met Shitty, and Shitty was like, Oh, God damn! Chuck, I, I didn't know you had a girlfriend. Oh, my God. Leslie, it's an honor. Pleased to meet you. And the barman is like, Yo, what's up? Uh, I'm going to get back to work. And... This is when the book starts into the pandemic part of the the story. Uh, as they were partying and drinking in the bar, two other bar patrons in the back of the bar started screaming and bashing their heads against walls and tables. And it was just pandemonium. Everyone freaked out. Police were called. Everyone fled the bar. And as soon as they got outside, there were other people in the streets screaming, ripping their hair out doing very self-destructive things because now they have the virus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Shitty has to be wheeled out of the bar and wheeled down the street and everyone just starts running and freaking out like, oh, no, what What do we do? Oh, man, 